like that one was hit right to the third base, but her speed just completely outruns the throw. And that now that's going to be back to, the, Sage Huggins. back to the true leadoff hitter, Sage Huggins. We'll now be batting with a runner on first base and two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch on the way is going to be grounded right to the third base. So she makes the throw, a long throw across the diamond, and makes the out, uh, make that put out 5 3, and that's going to do it. So one hit, no, no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody. Going this is the one left on. We're going to go to the top of the sixth inning. We're still tied at one apiece. It's like we'll be right back with the, it's like with more of the 2017 State 4A Softball Championships on the NFHS Network right after this word from our sponsors. State 4A Softball Championships on the NFHS Network. I'm Alex Cart bringing you the action today from the Title of Six here at Post Falls High School. We're leading off for the Warhawks is going to be the catcher, Kendall. First pitch on the way is going to be hit right to the shortstop. She fields it cleanly. Throws it across the line, overthrows the catcher, Martinez. She's going to go for second base, and she gets in safely on the E6. So credit her with uh, error, not a hit on this one, but she makes it all the way to second base on the E6 overthrow. And now we're going to have a courtesy runner for the catcher, trying to see who the runner is going to be. It's going to be number two, Carly Pena. For the Warhawks, that is going to be Michaela Killian. And now coming up is going to be Carly Pena. She lays down a quick bunt, fields it up, secures it early by the pitcher, it goes all the way across the diamond, but she is safe at first base. A little bit of miscommunication there by the, the, by the Vikings, and now she's standing over on first base. Number 12, Courtney Flaherty. Courtney Flaherty now, the, the school down one is a hit to the, uh, excuse me, as a hit to the pitcher. There's no throw there. It's now Courtney Flaherty will come up. On the day, she got on via an E3 and then ended up scoring the only run so far for, like, for Ridgeview. First pitch is fouled off. Count goes to Owen. One on Flaherty. Cortez trying to make sure no more runs come across for Ridgeview. The next pitch on the way is going to be way high. And a great save there by Conley as that prevents the runner from first going any farther as she stays at first base. Count though goes to one and one. Next pitch on the way is going to be hit. Grounded down the first base line, but foul. Count moves them to one and two. Oh, that could have been dangerous for the Vikings. No outs here on the top of the sixth. As Ridgeview has runners on the corners. Next pitch on the way is going to be swung on and foul right below the catcher. And Tommy wishes, she's like, she wishes that she would have caught that one so then they would have had a free out there. There you go, Ray Ray. There you go, Courtney. Cortez trying to limit the damage here as the next pitch is going to be swung on and missed. Strike three as 
Ferrari strikes out swinging, but on the play, Pena at first base steals second base. Now you got runners on second and third. Skyler Mayers. With a runner on, excuse me, with only one out. That's what I was trying to say. And now coming up is going to be Skyler Morris, the first baseman, who today is grounded out to the first baseman and also got an, got an infield hit. As the first pitch to her is going to be low for ball one. One and another count now on Morris. And that strikeout is big for Cortez if she wants to try to get out of this inning unscathed. As the next pitch on the way is going to be fouled off to the right side. Count then goes to one and one. So far today, as we said, Morris, it's like she was though thrown out at third base on a running play, but she wasn't thrown out because of uh, the end of an inning. As the next pitch is going to be fouled off to the right side, keeps the count at one and two. Well, yeah, but that base running error she had earlier actually possibly could have cost uh, Ridgeview another run or so. Trying to make up now for lost time. Next pitch on the way is going to be hit right to the second baseman. She throws it to the first baseman. We're going to play the plate. And she's out at the plate. Oh, my word. What a play by Martinez. What a great throw. Getting the runner down at the plate. Kendall is cut down there. So nothing bad. But then also a simple 4-3 putout. Excuse me. Out there, 4-3 putout. So essentially, Elaborate the double play ball, and that's going to do it for us here in the top of the sixth. Let's go, girls. So we'll be right back with more coverage of the 2017 State 4A Softball Championships on the NFHS Network right after this word from our sponsors. Wow! Good job, Let's see what happened in that one. We had... Okay, Lord. Okay. Okay. It's a, that's one hit. Yeah. That's like 9.30 Pacific, so... Uh, and he can go a good pop there, and you know, it's just not like... Oh this is crazy. Oh oh Do we have two left on this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Number 15, Taylor Guerra. Okay, like, welcome back to the Idaho High School School. <laughs> Idaho High School Activities Association presentation of the 2017 State 4A Softball Championships on the NFHS Network as Taylor Garrett gets ready to lead us off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch on the way to her is going to be called ball. She goes for a bunch of times. And the top of the sixth inning. Now that was really something. You had no outs, runners on the corners. You get a strikeout and then a double play through this weird base run. So then the game is still tied at one apiece as the next pitch on the way goes for a bunt. Fielded easily by the second baseman. Throws it over to the first baseman for an easy... 4-3 put out, and that's going to start us off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now it's going to bring up Aliyah Mendiola. Mendiola. It's going to bring up Aliyah Mendiola. Mendiola so far on the day has flown out to right field, but her big thing is that in the fourth inning, she hit a huge double into right center field and ended up scoring so far the only run for Middleton. As the next pitch on the way to her is going to be a called strike high in the zone. Count goes to 0 and 1. Walters gets a sign from her coach and gets ready to deliver the 0 1 pitch. And it's going to be a high for ball 2. This is for ball 1. 1 and 1 now the count on Mendiola, who's playing second base today. Julie Walsh now getting more and more signs from her coach as next pitch is going to be high as well. Ball to you. 
Two and one, the count now on the NBO, the prosecutor's count. And Walters is showing so a little bit of signs of fatigue does. Her fastball does not have that much zip anymore. India calls for time, and it's granted by home plate umpire. Maybe a little bit of a late idea, but granted, regardless, as the next pitch on the way is going to be hit right back up the middle. It goes off of the glove of Walters, and she's able to out run now for a single. Credit that action, not a single. That's going to be an E1 uh, as it just bounced off her glove. But she's on the Number 13, Lady And that's going to bring up Laney Lyle, the designated player today. Lyle was the one who hit the single in the center field that was able to drive in Mendiola from second base. As that first person hit into the gap in left center field, another base hit. There is a each round will advance one, and that's going to be another hit into left field. And Lyle has her second hit in this game. Mendiola advances over to second base, and now that's going to bring up the catcher, Ellie Conley. Conley so far on the day has not looked too good. He's flown out to the first baseman and the shortstop so far, as the first pitch on the way is going to be a called strike on the outer half of the plate. Count goes to 0-1. On the way is going to be Bob's a little bit back of home plate. And now the count goes to 0-2 on Conley. And right now, this is a golden opportunity for the Vikings there for Conley to try and put a little bit of separation as they go into possibly into the final innings. We are still tied at one apiece. But a single, a well-placed single here could change that as the next. Uh, as I pitch is going to be hit to the second baseman, throw to the clock, off to the first baseman, and that's going to be a quick 4 3 put out. And now Number the five, are going but my uh, Pelagio. We're talking about the, the possibility of an interference or an obstruction call here. But right now, that's still the second out, regardless, and there may be more after it. But I'd like to remind you that the, NFH Net the NFHS Network School Broadcast Program makes it easy for students to produce live video broadcasts by providing the software, tools, and training they need for free. Now schools can produce and distribute high-quality events throughout the year, including regular season sports, graduation, band, cheer events, as well as other school activities. If your school is interested in the becoming part of the NFHS, so Network School Broadcast Program, please write to SBP at NFHSnetwork.com. That's SBP at NFHSnetwork.com. NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. That's the first pitch on the way to Pelagio. It's going to be a swung on for strike one. Count goes to 0-1 on Pelagio. Now two outs of run on second base. A single here will break this tie. As the next pitch on the way is going to be fouled just far back over us here in the booth. And the count now goes to 0 and 2. And if you're Walters here, you really don't want to mess up here. Putting them with a one run advantage going into the top of the seven is something that your team really does not want going into the end of this game. Next pitch on the way is going to be tied for ball one. One and two, the count now on Pelagia. You're just joining us now, bottom of the six. We're tied at one. One and two to count here on Pelagio. Steps back into the box. Here's the one two pitch, and it's going to be outside. Two and two to the count. That one was close. Two and two to count on Pelagio. So far on the day for her, she is 0 for 2 with two ground outs one to the pitcher and one to the shortstop. So she's had, been having trouble putting the ball in the air. As the 2-2 two -two pitches, we swung on and missed. Strike three. And that's going to do it for Middleton here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We're going into the seventh inning. Scoreless. And with that one hit, one, no runs on one hit, one error, and two left on. We're going to the top of the seventh inning. We'll be right back with more of the 2017 State 4A Softball Championships on the NFHS Network 
right after this word from our sponsors. Of the 2017 State 4 a Softball Championships on the NFHS Network. Leading off here for the Warhawks here in the top of the seventh inning will be Victoria Soto. We are tied at one apiece going into the final inning. There could be some leading dramatics here today. The next pitch on the way from Cortez is going to be hit right back up the middle for a base hit. And she will now move up easily to first base, and that's going to be a leadoff single for Victoria Soto, and that's going to bring up the pitcher, Gracie uh, Number seven, Gracie Walters. Walters so far in today's game is 0 for 2 with a ground out to the third base, being unassisted, and a 4-3 put out. First pitch on the way to her is going to be hit, foul down the... First base side count goes to only one on Walters. Walters. <laughs> We're on the top of the seventh. Not a whole lot of ball game left to play against. We do have the possibility of extra innings if no more runs are scored. Next pitch on the way. It's going to be hit right back up. He's right behind the first base of her. Make easy single. Going all the way to the third base. That's Soto. And she's going to make it in safely. And going over to second base real quick is going to be Walters. Holy oh, smoke, Soto makes it all the way to third base. Yeah, and Walters makes it all the way to, to second base with a single to right field. From right field to third. It's not going to be ruled a double because she only made the second on the throw. But. Number five, Brooklyn Oswald. And now the Warhawks are in an excellent position to score and break this tie as, uh, excuse me, Carson Billings comes up to the plate. Billings so far today walked and has struck out looking. First pitch on the way. Two guys get a called ball. Count goes to 1 and 0 oh on Billings. Runners on second and third now, no outs. And Middleton, right? Is like looking right now like they are in a deep of trouble as the next pitch on the way. He's giving a cold strike on the upper half of the zone. Count goes to 1 and 1. Great work, Ray. Billings right now, as you said, in his uh, third inning, got on the field, the walk, and then was caught stealing. As next pitch is in the dirt, all two, two and one, the count. Which that one made it a lot harder for Ramirez, who then ended up striking out on the next. Uh, as the next pitch on the way is going to be hit foul down the right field line, and that even the count up at two apiece. Two and two the count. Cortez not has not had really a ton of strikeouts today. Only has my count one, two, three, four. As next pitch is getting fouled off right behind home plate once again. The count stays at two apiece. Billings is definitely fighting in this at bat right now. Got to see your seventh pitch of the at bat. Two-two pitch on the way is going to be in the dirt. Four-three, and the count has run four at 
three and two. Good job, Ray. Believe. You're the one I want. Good job, Ray. So Cortez now has a full count with nobody out. The next pitch on the way is going to be all four. And that locks the bases loaded. No appeal down to say that she ain't going to be able to do that. Like that. That's still going to load up the bases. As Gaines now stands on first base with the walk. That's going to lead to a pitching conversation on the mound. So just to kind of recap how this inning has gone so far, start off with a hit right back up the middle by Victoria Soto, who turned it into an easy single. Walters then got a single down, it's like, it's like down the right field line, which got uh, Soto to third base, and then she was able to get to second on the same hey, play. And Billings just walked over to first, got a walk to go to first base, and bases are now juiced for Jasmine hey, Ramirez, hey, who today so far in her two at bats has struck right out right. and ground out the second base. So and the first pitch is going to be a full strike on the higher echelon of the strike zone. Count goes to Owen 1. Great job, Ray. Ramirez still yet without a hit in this game. And going back to the last game, Ramirez also did not have a hit. As the next pitch is fouled off to the right side. Great job, Ray. Goes to 0-2. In fact, Ramirez has actually struck out over half of her at bats. She has struck out three as they over five at that bats. And this is now her sixth of the two games he's played. Oh, two pitches and swing and miss. Strike three. And Ramirez goes down swinging for the first out. And that is a big first out for Middleton as now the double play would end the inning. But that's going to now ring up Pena, Kendall Pena, who so far in this game got a single in the third inning and is able to swing Number three, the Kendall Pena. Out to the third baseman in the fifth inning. First pitch on the way to her is going to be called ball just a little bit low. Count goes to 1 0 on Pena. In fact, why don't you even go back to the last game? Currently, she is 1 for 4 total between the two games. This next pitch is going to be hit right back up the middle. Fielded by, by, excuse me, by Cortez. It goes back to the plate for the first count on Soto, who then is cut out there. So now two outs. This is going to be everyone else advances. So, uh, Kylie Kendall. so there's going to be a one two put out. Now there's two outs for the true right here. Like in Kylie Kendall. Great job, right? Yep. First pitch on the way to Kendall's the out strike on the outer half of the plate. Great job, and right? With Great this. Middleton might be able to find our way out of this jam. This is still loaded. Two outs. Next pitch on the way is in the dirt. Ball one. Count goes to one and one. Right here, right? Again, one and one count. Bases are still loaded. Next pitch on the way. Right back up the middle. That's a base hit. Excuse me, the bases continue to be jacked, but there's a bit of a fielding. And they're, they're just going to let her go back to first base as nobody was covering first. Martinez had left her position. And now the score is, you see, the tie has been broken. Number two, Kylie Walters Pena. Scores from third. And it's now two to one in favor of, Ridge, of Ridgeview. And that's going to bring up Pena. Let's go, Pena. Get this out, ladies. Credit that RBI to Kendall. Now Pena is up at the plate. So far today, she is one for two in this game. With a hit in the sixth. As next pitch is going to be a little floor right to Cortez. She makes the play. The damage has now been done. Count that as a uh, an F1 put out. But with a one run on one, two. So on two hits, no errors. And one, it's like, and three left on. We're going to now go to the bottom of the seventh inning. 
and we'll be right back with more coverage of the 2017 State 4A Softball Championship on the N on the NFA Chess Number Network. Seven, right after this word from our sponsors. Hey, it's just a game, guys. Okay. Let's go, Let's go, Let's go. Hey, win on three, one, two, three, five! Finish! Hey, Finish! Okay, so I'm going to lead off with the all of the enemy. Have fun, Raj. I'm playing in all of the final moment, I think. Right, well, that's, that we're in the final moment. Right. We might as well just start it off at the... So let's make sure that also like when we're done with the game, we still have to do awards and quickies. Welcome back to the Idaho High School Activities Association presentation. Number 10, Arthur Mosley. On the NFHS Network, and now it's time for the final moments. It's like where these final moments have been brought to you by all of them. As the first pitch on the way is going to be hit foul on a bunch of attempts to the left side as the leadoff hitter Cortez hits this one right. Excuse me, and actually we have a pinch hitter for Cortez. My mistake there. It's going to be number 10, Mosley, who has checked into the game. I guess first pitch will be fouled to the left side. The next pitch on the way to Russell Bunch again. Bunch it just in front of the, of the plate. Taken by the third base. She has a single. She is running out safe at first base. What a play by, excuse me, trying to find her first name. But Azia, is it Azia Mosley? Credit that to Third baseman, and the play is made, but she outruns the throw. Now coming up is going to be Howie Niemeyer. But today, so far in this game, is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. The first pitch is going to be a ball outside. Right now, as we've seen, uh, Reggie is up 2-1. to one. They got one run in the, the top of the seventh inning. As the next pitch goes for another punt, and it's going to be a big old strike foul ball that lands literally on the tarp that we're uh, sitting at. And the count now is 1-1 one and one on Neymar. One and one the count announced by the home plate umpire. Walters getting ready, gets the signs from her coach, gets ready to deliver the 1-1 one, one pitch, another bunch of times, she gets it down. Really, one more time by Walters, she throws it to first base for the out, and a long throw over to the runner at second who makes it there. Uh, Mosley over at second base is safe, but uh, on the play, Niemeyer is out, ruled out 1-3, put out. And now that's got to be McKenzie Ozuna. Ozuna on the day is one for two with a hit and a strikeout. Runner on second base with one out. They need one more run to send it into extra innings, two to win it. Walter steps onto the rubber, gets ready for the first pitch, and it's another bunch. It's right down the line. This may be a She gets there safely. She gets the easy bunch base hit. And now Mosley goes over to third base. Cortez moves over to, it's not Cortez, Mosley moves over to third base with only one out now. And that's going to bring up the true leadoff hitter in Sage Huggins. On the day so far, she is 0 for 3 with a strikeout looking and a couple of 5 3 putouts. And right now the head coach is having a quick word with. A feet, was like with his infield, just trying to calm them down. One out, runners are at the corners. And this is as big of any moment as there is for Sage Huggins, the shortstop. 
Home plate umpires now motioning out to get the players away from the huddle, and it works as everyone leaves, and it looks like... Oh, no, never mind. We do not have pitching change. Oh, so we'll be Relax, three, slow yeah, down. Yeah, we had a pitching change, which... So, coming up now is the same stage arguments. Over for three. Runners at the corners, and Walters gets her sign from her coach. Kind of questions a little bit, then steps onto the rubber as we get ready for the first match. She shows by once again, pulls it back. That's going to be a called strike. As that's the, excuse me, 